follow three extraordinary people who have devoted their lives to serving the poor of South Africa through the Christian ministry, Living Hope. John Thomas, a pastor who is leading his church to serve the sick, hungry, and dying in the communities that surround them. Journey beside John through the neighborhoods where they work. Meet the people their ministry has impacted. And hear from his heart why they chose to make a stand for the poor. Joey Langford, who moved his young family from the United States to Cape Town. Journey beside Joey as he equips men and women with job skills and leads them out of the bondage of poverty. And a young South African woman who is using compassionate action to break the poverty cycle of her own people. Journey beside her and gain a new perspective on faith in action. That we're able to serve 19 or 20,000 people in a year. That is just a little local church full of ordinary people. You see, that's the God we serve. You can change the world for God as you go and say, we're going to deal with poverty. We're going to break this year. We're going to be a revolution for Jesus. If we almost die, that's okay. Because we're giving our life to God. And that's what counts. Hey, welcome in. This is the Steve Gill Show. That is a trailer for a film from uh, Epiphany Documentary Films, Living Hope. Uh, it's, it's the latest in a series of documentaries that they have done, uh, Sons of Luala, uh, about uh, two kids that literally come from the uh, the, the most dire poverty in Africa to uh, pursue uh, a medical education and then go back to their own village and uh, and start dispensing hope and help and health care. Uh, Journey to Everest, traveling to the, to the very highest uh, point in the world, and now uh, living hope more about uh, uh, the, the the life changing work of those in the uh, in the third world in Africa, in particular uh, Brentwood Baptist Church in the Nashville area is uh, is helpful and behind this uh, this new film uh, along with David Kern and uh, Scott Harris from the church. David Kern, the film is it Kern or Kern? Kern, Kern, the uh, the filmmaker. And how did this all come? I mean, we've seen by the way, Scott, uh, you know, churches start getting in the film business. You got this little church down in Georgia. They do Facing the Giants, Fireproof. They're they're literally producing films that are drawing thirty and forty million dollars. Amazing, they, and it started with literally the church just put together that That's little right. thing to, to start doing the kind of Christian, um, like re, not not saying documentaries aren't real films, but the, but the right. kind of feature films sure. that sure. people go and you know they eat the popcorn sure. and the juju bees sure. and the coke. They're desperate for that and positive entertainment. And where's that family entertainment? Yeah. So a church is look, nobody's doing it. We're going to do it. The same thing now with these documentary films. Look, Hollywood ain't the place to get right. these kind of inspirational films. Churches are doing it. How did Brentwood Baptist get into the church business, of, of film business of church? Well, you know, I can't say that we're really in the film business, but we just have incredibly talented members who are feeling called to do great things. And then our role as a church is to be their cheerleader, to be their advocate. And who knows where this will go? But but David is a member of our you're church. You're more focused on the mission side of, of sure, the Sure, absolutely. So that's why absolutely. This and uh, it's, it's, it's a great fit. And so here's one of our own members who has a track track record of doing this type of thing well, and we want to get behind it because this is a partner that we've been working with for nine years. And these, David, are the stories that, that don't get told in the feature film arena, don't don't get right. told on television, uh, and yet as a filmmaker, with not only the great visuals that you've put into place in this and the other films, but, but amazing stories that need to be told. 
I think the uh, I think they are amazing stories, and I think there's a lot of stories out there like this. I think the the difference between the uh, what what uh, other other folks are doing with the with the scripted movies like Courageous and Fireproof, um, and what we're doing with documentaries is um, is the is that is that that reality core. Um, and I think the I think Courageous and Fireproof and Facing the Giants are fantastic. Um, what we're doing is a little bit different in telling real stories about real people, and a lot of a lot of what we capture, a lot of the adventure, a lot of the drama, is unfolding as the cameras are rolling. Um, so you, at some t- sometimes you can see real heroism and, re- and real faith, but you also see the downside of human behavior. And you know what? We if the, if there is a, a downside, if 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 people are in a film and and they're and they're serving the poor and they're just exhausted because they're serving the they're serving the poor, they're seeing poverty, they're seeing AIDS every single day, and they they push through that because of their faith and they continue to serve God. That's heroism, and that's absolutely fantastic. And that's what we get with the documentary form. And you can't see, see it unless you're there, right? And right. the camera can't see it unless right. it's there. That's right. And 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 if we do get to see it with those cameras, then we get to see. Christians who uh, they might be doing an extraordinary wor- work, things that uh, that are just uh, absolutely fantastic. And if we, if it's in a documentary form, we see you know these people Millions are really people not that different from from me. They, we, we, Regular they say, people doing heroic things, right, right, right. And that's and that's the the fun part about the documentary form. You know, when when a, when a Christian pastor gets caught, uh, you know, doing something inappropriate, you know, when when the temptations of of stealing money or or behaving bad, man, that gets the front page news stories. Yeah, it does. When right. when you know seven volunteers from Brentwood Baptist Church go to you know Nairobi and and serve the poor or serve you know those who are suffering from AIDS or or go to Sudan and help rescue uh, kids who are are sold into slavery at seven for 20 bucks, that doesn't get the front pages of the newspapers. And that's why these documentaries, I think, are so important. And that's why it's so important that the church figures out how to start telling these stories. Because yes, they happen far away. And yes, many of us will never meet them. But as we encounter those people through film, through other media outlets, then it makes our faith come more alive. There's an incredible blessing to the church in America where we realize we're not just here for ourselves. The, uh, you know, the gospel that comes to us must flow from us and through us. And it helps inspire people to do a mission trip, to say, look, okay, I've, I've never been to Honduras or sure. to Haiti or to, uh, to Africa um, or even, even to inner city Nashville right, or to right. Chicago. Or I, across the street. I've never done that before. <laughs> Where do I get started? When you yes. see others who are just like you. That's right. That just say, I'm going to get started by doing it. And you see that in film. That inspires others to say, look, you know, I'm hearing God's call. I didn't know how to pick up the phone and answer. And here's here's a way to answer. And if you can't go, then you can send. And, and that's where, you know, or fund the, the videos right. or the documentaries exactly. that show people what's going on that spread that faith. Uh, right. for, first of all, how do people get involved in helping this particular film? We're going to talk a little bit more about it in a moment. Uh, EpiphanyDocumentaryFilms.com on the web. Uh, E-P-I-P-H-A-N-Y, documentaryfilms.com, epiphanydocumentaryfilms.com. You can see a little bit more about Sons of Luwala, uh, Journey to Everest, and uh, and then the, the latest film that uh, David and his crew have produced, Living Hope. Um, how do they get involved to help this mission along first? Sure. Well, there's basically, David can speak more to it, but uh, David is, uh, is practically volunteering his time. And as we raise about, is that right, uh, $59,000, but $15,000 right now is crucial because that f- initial fifteen will get them on the ground, will get them the equipment, and then they can start shooting the movie. And uh, we are hoping that people will respond because it's an incredible story. Uh, 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 and do they go to the church website or do they go to Epiphany? EpiphanyDocumentaryFilms.com. We're going to talk in a moment. I want you to hear what Sons of Luwala was, what Journey to Everest is. And what uh, what this new idea, Living Hope, will be if it gets done. Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show. Talk a little movie magic today. Uh, David Kern, movie um, 
maker, um, documentary filmmaker. Um, and and uh, again, go to their website, epiphanydocumentaryfilms.com to find out more about uh, about their what they're doing. They've done two amazing films, and they're working on a uh, on a third, uh, Living Hope, we're going to talk about in just a moment. Scott Harris with uh, Brentwood Baptist Church here in uh, Nashville. Uh, Mike Glenn, uh, the pastor and one of my buddies, and um, you know, was, was, we were actually working out together at uh, Prairie Life the other day, and uh, f- you know, heart and soul, you know, uh, Pastor Glenn's working it. So uh, uh, a great uh, a <laughs> that's great, a good report, uh, Steve. Thank and, you. <laughs> um, you know, he was he was uh, he was getting it done, sweating for you know, sweating for Jesus. Uh, the other films that you've done, David, talk just a moment about them, and then let's talk a little bit about what uh, what Living Hope is. And again, you can see these these trailers, see what these films are about, and just amazing visuals, amazing stories. Epiphany Documentary Films. Com. Sons of Luwala was the first one, right? Uh, Journey to Everest was actually Journey to Everest was the first one. Okay, that was start that with Journey was, to Everest. Uh, what was it about? That was produced about uh, four years ago, and that's the story of uh, of a, a team of trekkers going to Mount Everest to uh, avoid a uh, a plane crash that killed eighteen people. Um, I was actually on that trip. I was I was supposed to be on that airplane. We were bumped from that flight uh, just minutes before it took off, and another team took our place and crashed in the Himalayas. Um, it's a story of faith, um, and it's also a story of adventure. We, uh, the team, ends up uh, getting to the Himalayas and uh, and climbing all the way to uh, above Everest Base Camp. And um, there's also a, a mission story, which is uh, which is really at the heart of uh, of the types of stories that I'm, I'm interested in. Extraordinary stories that have some kind of a faith element to it, and uh, and that's what we experienced. In, uh, and there's plenty of them out there. I mean, it's not like okay, once uh, once this uh, this new one gets done, okay, you, you, that's it. Those are the only three that you found. There's there's oh, yeah. plenty more it's stories. Unbe- it's unbelievable. It's and, and it's uh, it's I think with the, the new technology that's come out with video cameras and editing and everything, I think these things are going to be showing up in in the coming years. I think a new generation of filmmakers is going to go out there, find these stories, hopefully partner with a church, and uh, so they can get the. Because you're not the, talking huge bucks here. Fifty nine thousand bucks gets this done. Where yeah, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So we're not talking about a lot of money, but it'll it'll make a huge impact with in in terms of living hope. Um, if we're able to produce this thing, uh, Living Hope, the ministry, will be able to use the movie uh, to raise money for five, ten years. Uh, they can tour around the country for years and years and, and, and support their ministries. And, and not only fundraise, but also friend raise, which Absolutely. is what, what I think these films help do so much of. Of When you right. see the mission, when you know, I can't get on a plane and fly to some of these places very easily. But if, if I've got a, an organization, a rotary club or a church group, when we can see it and say, yes, your, your donation can support this ministry – you can visualize it, and, and that's not going to be possible unless you can see this. Right. Okay, uh, then Sons of Luwala. I love this story. i got to tell you this one. This is yeah. one of my favorites. Luwala, I produced Luwala. It was directed by a Nashville filmmaker named Barry Simmons, who's absolutely fantastic. And uh, Barry followed the story of two Africans who uh, came to the United States, were educated here, and in their early to mid-20s uh, felt they needed to go back home and build a health clinic because people were just dying all over the place in, the, in their hometown in Kenya. There was no health clinic. Uh, it was take hours and hours in order to get to to the nearest uh, uh, little clinic. And so uh, over the course of about two years, they started with just a small amount raised, and and, uh, they they ended up on the news, and then Jarza Clay found out about them, and then Bill Friss found out about them. And at the end of this, uh, they were able to not only build their health clinic, but now they have uh, I was just in a, in a meeting with the with the man who runs their nonprofit two weeks ago and he tells me that they have like eight buildings now and uh, we open the movie with a story of uh, a childbirth where the where the mother uh, lost uh, the child which is a true story which happened before the uh, the clinic was built and, we, and it's shot with night vision cameras and it's 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 very raw very real we end the movie after the clinic has been been built with a story of uh, of a childbirth that is going wrong but because of the health clinic and it's there uh the child uh survives and is about a year and a half when we shoot her in the movie so it's the story it literally is a story of they they came from a, a Death being being surrounded by death, and then and now they have the the the, the freedom of life now. You know, one of the big challenge, uh, and, and I think one of the reasons why the mission work that ba- that uh, that Brentwood Baptist does, that uh, David Vanderpool, we're doing some work with Dr. David Vanderpool and his MMDR uh, mobile me- 
medical great disaster relief uh, dot org website mmdr dot org. You know, we were talking with him just the other day that that you know, literally in Haiti, where he's focused a lot of his time and attention, billions of dollars has been put into government agencies and government aid, but it doesn't get down to help people. And we're literally ten dollars, twenty dollars can literally be life changing. These clinics that you give a dollar here, it is a dollar bang for your buck. It doesn't get filtered down all the government agencies where nothing actually gets done. And that's where MMDRs work, what, what these clinics, yep. what these, or, yep. what your mission work is sure. doing. It's when you give a dollar, you know that dollar is actually going to go make a difference, not get filtered through 12 government hands where maybe two cents actually makes it to what you're trying to help. You know, Steve, the challenge is not identifying need. Need's everywhere. The biggest challenge is who is the partner on the ground? who is trustworthy, who is going to make sure those gifts are stewarded appropriately. And they're out there, but you got to really find them. And Living Hope is such a partner. And part of what, what David was telling me as, as well is, is they don't go in Bible thumping, for lack of a better word, the moment they walk into one of these villages in Africa or in Haiti. Sure. They go in and they're there time and time again. That's right. They provide the basic care, the, the needs of life saving. And then after you're there a while, they get to know you, they go, why are you here? You earn the right to be heard. And then when you say, here's why we're here, this is exactly. the faith. That's what changes. And you see the same thing again with uh, with Living Hope. Exactly. Let me tell you about the, these people down there in South Africa and, and what they've d- done with Living Hope. It started out uh, about a dozen years ago where there was a, a small church in, in Cape Town, South Africa. And uh, they the, the pastor heard a statistic that uh, essentially – um, a third of of the population that was surrounding their church had HIV. And he had never heard that before, and he was just flabbergasted and said, we have to do something about this. And that's that great voice we're hearing in the... Uh, that's the that's man's right. voice that you that's hear. Right. And John he's, Thomas. He's one of our... Well, the, the film will follow three characters, and John is one of our three characters. And uh, uh, we'll cross-cut between these three stories. They're doing different things, but the common thread is they're all serving Christ in different ways. And John uh, founded Living Hope but it started very, very small. They they did something, I, I guess, similar to what Mother Teresa did, where they had an AIDS ministry, where they were serving and being with uh, with people that had AIDS and HIV that were on their deathbed. And it was a small thing. And they did very well with that. And they were good, as we say, good stewards of that. And so uh, it, it grew. And today, 12 years later, uh, they're, they're having like 20,000 people that are going through their doors. And it's not just people that are sick, although they do a lot of work with people that are sick. But it's also our second character is working with economic development. He has uh, uh, Joey Langford uh, is uh, is a Franklin boy, which is where I come from. And Joey uh, is uh, in his early 30s. And uh, about a year and a half ago, he decided to do something incredibly risky, unbelievably uh, uh, risky. He moved his entire family. Um, himself, his wife, and uh, Four children. three children, and then one adopted mm-hmm. child, mm-hmm. adopted child from Ethiopia, and uh, moved them to Cape Town, and uh, because he wanted to be, he wanted to be in the game. He wanted to, he wanted to be at where where God was working, and he wanted to be making a difference for the kingdom. And so uh, he goes down there, and he is he he basically is, is sort of a uh, a farmer, and he's teaching uh, poor men from from these uh, slums how to farm and how to harvest, and then how to uh, sell their 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 products at, at markets and stuff. And he's giving them a way that they can make money, so they can get out of their ten by ten little shacks. Um, our third character will be a uh, a South African female in her in her early twenties who's working either in the in the with the children there or uh, with in in the in the medical division there, um, and so she will be. Uh, serving her own people and so it will have three different characters three different type characters but the common thread is they're all serving christ in something that they know how to do well john is is a pastor and so he's a good leader that's how he's created he does that well joey came from a a business background and he's teaching business but he's doing it for jesus down there in south africa and then we'll be following uh, a girl that ha- has either a heart for children or a heart for uh, for helping uh, and serving sick people and and the next step is to get the, the first step of the fifteen thousand dollars that uh, the brentwood baptist and others are, are seeking to raise to, to get this done epiphany documentary com, and and that's that you need the fifteen thousand to get to the fifty nine thousand that's right and when we get that fifteen we put david on an airplane and he goes and he films 
overwhelms the story, and it's going to be awesome. And then it's uh, the production and the distribution. That's is right. The next phase. First, you got to get the film in the in the camera. That's, That's right. right. Thank you, guys. God Steve, bless you, for bless you man. Thank and, you so uh, much. It Thanks, is amazing Steve. stuff, folks. Go check it out. EpiphanyDocumentaryFilms.com. E-P-I-P-H-A-N-Y DocumentaryFilms.com. And uh, we'll be back with more of the Steve Gill Show in just a moment.